So what is the fastest and most efficient way to self-learn programming? Hmm, if I were to think over the years, I think the fastest, most efficient way is to have a mentor or have at least a community where you're learning from and you're not just learning by yourself. I always remember the first time I started learning how to code, I mentioned that I was coding in the TI-83 and I was trying to figure out how to make my own games. And so I went to the TI-83 manual and I was looking at the documentation for how to build a program. And one of there were so many examples in there, but the only example that I could get working involved using a go-to and a label. And basically in a go-to and a label is you tell your program to go to a certain label. And then the other one was menu. So I could, I could easily code those things. Those are the only three things that I could code and I had a very limited, I was very limited in terms of what kind of applications I could build. And then I was talking to a friend, maybe a year later, after I was making these basic um, applications, basic games, I went to my friend and I found out that he was also coding. He was also coding in the, his TI-83. And then I was looking at his, his program and he was able to get it so that his program could, you could actually push the buttons and make something happen in your program and I was really interested in that and I said how did you do that and then he showed me that he was using a, a particular function in term in the calculators library and I didn't know about it but he showed it to me and when he showed that to me it really changed the game for me and then from that point on I started using the get key function so that I could get user input from the calculator buttons themselves and then I was able to make more kinds of games and all that to say is I really started to open my eyes on what kind of what kinds of applications I could build just because I had another friend who was coding also. Another thing he had was he was able to get his compute his calculator to talk to another calculator through the link because in a TI-83 they have links and then you can put a link in one and another and they could actually communicate over the link and you can send um, you can send whatever you want through the link to the other calculator. And when I saw that, when he was doing that, he was experimenting at that time. And then we were both excited and we were thinking, maybe we can make a chat application with our calculators so we could chat during class. So we were really interested and we were coding together. And through that experience, I learned that if you have another person who's also coding in the same language as you, you can really learn a lot just by talking to each other. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects. And I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, fast forward to when I started working at my first job. My first job was a research and development company. So they put me on different types of research projects and in each research project, I was the only developer. And that was because those projects were just small projects and they just needed some proof of concept type programming. But then I was put on a product type project where we were trying to develop a product. And when we were developing that product, we had a team of developers. And so you can imagine when we were in a, working in a team, I started to grow a lot. And that's because we had code reviews. And in these code reviews, I would code things and I was really confident with my coding skills. But every time I had a code review, the uh, the older developers would look at my code and they would talk they would they would point out a lot of bad coding practices and they would point out a lot of bad coding habits and for me i was kind of shocked because the code worked but what i didn't realize was there was more efficient ways of coding and there are things that are good practice and bad practice so i started to really learn a lot in terms of how to code and how to go about approaching different problems and different types of features by talking to those older developers. So all that to say is when you start working with a team of developers and those team of developers are more experienced than you, that's when you start to grow really fast. 
There were also plenty of times when they asked me to code a feature or to fix a bug and I had no way of knowing how to go about approaching it. So I would often talk to the more senior developers and ask them for some advice and pick their brain. And they would often give me some pointers, they would help me think through the problem and then help me really understand the software. And I think I really grew a lot just by talking to those senior developers. I'll never forget one time they taught me regex or regular expressions. When I first joined the company, I knew nothing about that. But because I joined the company and I started working with these team of developers, now I know about regex. I also learned a lot on how to debug just by sitting with them and working with them in the lab. A lot of times when I would get stuck, I would call, call out to them and then they would come to the lab and then we would sit down together and then we would try to debug the code together. And then a lot of the tools that they used that they taught me was Wireshark and the Visual Studio debugger and the Eclipse debugger. And I learned a lot just by sitting with them. Fast forward to today, I'm still learning a lot at my current job. My current job is a product development company, so our products are really complex. There's a lot of complex code bases that are each talking to each other, and a lot of the bugs that I find are really hard to find, and a lot of them are really hard to diagnose and fix. So I'm learning a lot just by talking to the more senior developers at my company. The more senior developers at my company are really smart and they know a lot about our products and they also know a lot in terms of low level coding. So I'm learning a lot just by talking to them and asking them questions and every day I'm always learning at my company just because I have those people in my life. And even though I've been coding for 10 plus years, I'm still learning a lot about how to make my code more efficient. One time I was coding a feature and I showed it to the senior developers, more senior developers, and then they, they looked at it and they were not happy with it because they wanted it to perform better. And their concern is more about performance. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted my, my feature to use less memory and to run faster. And so I learned a lot from that experience, just from them looking at my code. So if you're a self learner, what you really need to do is surround yourself with other programmers. And that's because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And you will only know what you don't know if you have someone tell you what you don't know. I say this a lot, but learning computer languages or programming languages is very similar to learning a verbal language. And you can, you can read about a verbal language, you can read all the syntax, you can read about it, watch tutorials about how to speak in that language, but you're not gonna get any better until you start speaking to other people. And then when you start hearing other people talk to you as well, that's how you start to get better at that language. And if you really wanna learn a foreign language and you wanna grow by leaps and bounds, and you wanna grow exponentially, you really need to hire a coach or a mentor. And I'm Filipino, but Tagalog is not my first language. I grew up in America, so I speak English, but I really wanted to learn Tagalog. And I was only going, I was only learning so much just by talking to other people in Tagalog, but I started to grow a lot when I hired a coach or a mentor. And that's because my coach or mentor was able to teach me things in one week that I could probably self-learn in a span of a couple of months. So it really made me grow exponentially and really made my growth a lot faster. And the same idea applies to programming languages. You can learn a lot by yourself watching tutorials, but it may take you much, much longer than if you had just learned it from a coach or a mentor. Right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. I hope it really helped you out. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.